infrastructure as a service, they just rent infrastructure for the purpose of running applications. And SaaS providers, they offer their services for a variety of business applications, including things like billing, payroll management, CRM, email and collaboration, sales management, and that kind of stuff. And SaaS, which stands for software as a service, is a on-demand access to ready-to-use cloud-hosted application software. Then the infrastructure as a service is really a type of cloud computing service that offers essential compute, storage, and networking resources. All this on demand on a pay-as-you-go basis. And infrastructure as a service is one of the four types of cloud services. And this along with software as a service, which is the SaaS platforms, which is platform as a service, the SaaS, and then PaaS, which is a platform as a service. And uh, well, I do you know my name is Ian Hillman, and I would like to share with you information about uh, cloud computing and uh, its different services. Well, the difference between SaaS, PaaS, EAS, and DAS is the scope of service that these provide. Well, SaaS provides software in addition to PaaS, and PaaS provides a platform in addition to EAS. And EAS provides infrastructure such as servers, and DAS provides a virtual desktop environment. And there you have it, SaaS, PaaS, EAS, and DAS. And uh, public cloud providers such as Amazon Web Services, the AWS, and Google Cloud support rapid elasticity. You'll find the quicker a cloud provider can allocate varying resources to dynamic customer demands, the more elastic its cloud services are. And cloud elasticity is enabling the pay-as-you-go cost model in which you only charged for the resources that you actually consume. And that would be, for example, Amazon claims that customers who use AWS Instant Scheduler with Amazon EC2, Elastic Computing Cloud, can realize savings up to about 70%. And Amazon Web Service defines elasticity as their ability to acquire resources as you need them and release resources when you no longer need them. And Microsoft Azure defines elasticity as the ability to quickly expand or decrease computing processing, memory, and storage resources to meet change and demand without worrying. And why is cloud scalable? A scalable cloud architecture is made possible through virtualization. And unlike physical machines whose resources and performance are relatively set, virtual machines, virtual machines which are known as like VMs, are highly flexible and can be easily scaled up or down. So both elasticity and scalability are important for cloud users. They need to be able to grow their workflows to match their enterprise's needs, while also knowing that they also have the correct amount of resources to do so. And elasticity is the ability to scale up or down to meet requirements. And you do not have to guess the capacity when provisioning a system in AWS, because the AWS Elastic Service allows you to scale services up and down within minutes, improving agility and reducing costs because you'll only be paying for what you use. And cloud reliability is the measurement of the probability that the cloud delivers the services that it's designed for. And this implies that the service is available and performs in the way that it's intended. So when we use cloud services, it is easy to assume that they all deliver what they designed and marketed to deliver. And that's not always the case. And uh, if we look at scalability, this is the ability um, of a system to accommodate larger loads just by adding resources, either making hardware stronger, so that is scaling up, or adding additional nodes, which is scaling out, which is all scale out. And elasticity is the ability to fit the resources needed to cope with loads dynamically. That's important. It's dynamically, which is usually in relation to scale out. And a user can create, launch, and terminate server instances as needed, and just paying by the second for active servers. And that's where the term elastic is connected to this. And so EC2 provides users with control over the geographical location of, the, uh, of those instances that allow for latency optimization and high levels of redundancy. And auto-scaling for the aspect of the service that are not elastic by design, you know, you have to test elasticity both up and down, you know, ensuring 
it will meet the requirements for the load variance. And then you just iterate on implementation and testing until you can meet those requirements. And you find this what's known as a cloud API and this enables end users to access a cloud provider's applications or its services such as computer infrastructure, storage resources or monitoring tools. And APIs define the possible features and functions of that app or service along with the details needed to execute them. So what is cloud scaling? In cloud computing, scaling is the process of adding and removing compute storage, network, services, and this to meet the demands of workload and what the workload makes for resources in order to maintain availability and performance as utilization increases. And scalability is used to meet the static increase in the workload and elasticity is used to meet the dynamic changes where the resources need can either increase or decrease. So scalability is always used to address the increase in workload within an organization. So in defining cloud, elastic is the idea that the computing resources released can be increased and decreased, as we said, dynamically, dynamically, that's important. So it can also be done programmatically and that in a short span of time and that organization pay for just the resources that they're using. So that's the intention behind it. And to add more to scalability, which is the ability of any scheme to intensify the task of its hardware and its resources to hold the inconsistency, the inconsistency in command, and that's called scalability. And if we look at flexibility, it's the amplitude of the schema that augments the task on the hardware and its property and uh, this is known as flexibility. And virtualization is the creation of virtual servers, as well as infrastructures, devices, computing resources, and virtualization changes the hardware, the software relation, the hardware software relation. And it's one of the foundational elements of cloud computing technology. And that helps utilize the capabilities of cloud computing to the full, to the absolute fullest. And if we look at reliability, the reliability pillar encompasses the ability of the workload to performance and uh, to perform its intended function correctly and consistently when it's expected to. And this includes the ability to operate and test the workload through its total life cycle. And elasticity can also be done according to traffic patterns. And if we see cloud SLAs, you know, cloud service level agreements is an agreement between a cloud service provider and a customer that ensures a minimum level of services are being maintained. And the cloud makes it easy to build fault, uh, fault tolerance into an infrastructure. You can easily add extra resources to it and allocate them for redundancy. And you can employ measures that make your cloud system more reliable and those redundant resources kick in automatically when a system experiences a fault. So the result, so if we look at virtualization and how it virtualizes your hardware into multiple machines and you'll find that cloud computing is a combination of hardware and devices. And in virtualization, a uh, user gets dedicated hardware while in cloud computing, multiple hardware devices provide one login environment for the user. And an EC inst EC2 instance is like a remote computer running Windows or Linux on which you can install whichever software you want, including a web server that's running PHP code and a database on the server. And Amazon S3 is just a storage service and it's typically used to enlarge binary files. And a good example of an infrastructure as a service is AWS EC2. And EC2 provides scalable infrastructure for the companies that want to host cloud-based application. And if you have those cloud applications, EC2 is good for the users who do not own a physical server. And it allows you to launch individual instances which you can use for pretty much whatever you like. And ECS is a container service, which means it will launch instances that will be ready to launch container applications, things like Docker. And the evolution of cloud computing has led to what has been described as a cloud first strategy. And this approach to computing suggests that an organization should look first to cloud solution when developing new processes or adapting old processes before considering non-cloud-based solutions. So unlike a SaaS API, which commands a remote application server to perform a task, a PaaS API describes the task in detail to the PaaS server. 
And this then performs and shares the manipulation on behalf of the client's requesting application. And a great example of this is uh, Microsoft's Azure service. And cloud computing with AWS, the Amazon Web Services, is the world's most comprehensive and broadly adopted cloud platform. And this offers like over 200 fully featured services from data centers globally. And a hybrid cloud environment is used to deploy private cloud for critical workloads and a public cloud to host less critical workloads. And primarily, there are two ways to scale in the cloud. One is known as horizontally or vertically. So when you scale horizontally, you are scaling out or in, which refers to the number of provisioned resources. So when you scale vertically, it's often called scaling up or down, which refers to the power and capacity of an individual resource. Then if we look at rapid elasticity, you know, it's a cloud computing term for scalable provisioning or for the ability to provide scalable services, as we said. And experts are pointing to this type of scalable, scalable model, you know, because auto scaling is a cloud scaling feature that enables organizations to scale cloud services such as server capacities or virtual machines and that up or down it can be based on defined situations as well as traffic like we said it does play a role and private cloud also known as a internal cloud or corporate cloud is a computing environment in which uh, all hardware and software resources are dedicated exclusively to and accessible only by a single customer and the traditional method of scaling by running multiple copies of an application load balanced across servers is uh, the x-axis and the general approach of uh, microservices falls along the y-axis. So y-axis scaling brings the application into its components and services. That will be the y-axis scaling. And so when you move scaling into the cloud, you experience an enormous amount of flexibility that saves both money like we said, time and all this for the business and it, you'll find sometimes your demand will totally boom and you'd need to accommodate the new load. And those are some of the advantages you get out of it. And Netflix is a good example of a platform as a system, which is a pass that was built from scratch and uh, containers, you know, commonly Docker, open source containers. And uh, it's one of the building blocks of pass. And in a certain manner, it's really a neighbor of it. And some people are really wondering what's so special about Lambda service because there were many compute services available available before Lambda uh, was was there like a Google App Engine, Google App Engine, Herico, you know. And Lambda is function as a service, which is FAAS FAS, and that is not a platform as a service. So Lambda is function and components of cloud computers are, you know, one plant infrastructure and applications, service, runtime cloud, storage, infrastructure, management, security, and internet. Those are the components of cloud computers. That brings us to the end. Thank you for listening. Comment, rate, and subscribe. Watch the other videos. My name is Ian Hillman, and see you in the next video.